did your older sister kind of like, it seems like y'all kind of followed the same footsteps of going to Michigan and swimming through there. Is that just because it was close by or is it because your older sister went there? Or how did that all work? You know, it's funny you say that. I always told my parents, I said, don't assume I'm going to Michigan just because Allie's there. <laughs> my name is Andrew Smith. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Successful Smitty Podcast. I got a super awesome guest here today. Her name is Gabby Duluth. She is a professional swimmer from Michigan who also swam for the University of Michigan, and she graduated with a bachelor's in sports management in 2018. She's been a part of three Big, big Ten championship teams, and she individually finished fourth place in the NCAA championship meet her senior year, along with being team captain that year as well. She's an NCAA All-American and All-American Honors, five-time Big Ten champion, and she has been on the USA national team from 2018 to 2021, a five-time World University Games gold medalist. She got a silver medal in the 800 free relay at the FINA World Championships, and she's been a part of the ISL New York Breakers in Season 1 and Tokyo Frog Kings in Season 3. And currently, she's training at the University of Tennessee as a pro for the 2024 Olympics. And she is also the social media content creator for Barney Wellness Building and an AFPA certified sports nutritionist. So welcome to the podcast, Gabby. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here and thank you for letting me on. Yeah, my pleasure. So yeah, Gabby, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Just like, where, where's your so story start? Yeah, so I started swimming when I was about seven years old. My older sister actually got us all into swimming. Uh, we were just swimming at our park um she wanted to do it with a friend and then my parents were like oh well it's probably good to actually get you guys all in the water and know how to swim around water in case anything did happen so we started mm -hmm. um all of us actually from a young age and then we went into competitive swimming but not year round until i would say year round probably started when we were 11 or 12 um and then I really stuck with swimming probably seventh or eighth grade. And then into high school, I chose swimming um, and then have been swimming ever since. So definitely was awesome. like a family sport. Yeah. So um, right when you started swimming, like, were you pretty good already? Like, did you feel you had a talent for it or did you just um, slowly start to get better and better? And you're like, wait, I'm actually kind of good at this thing. Yeah, I think I slowly started to get better and better. I loved being um, in the water, around the water. Um, it was such, all my friends were doing it and I was creating new friends and new memories. And of course, all my sisters are built in best friends. So mm -hmm. I had that, but definitely slowly grew into um, probably in middle school when everyone was kind of people were like oh you guys have a really good talent um you could go like swimming could take you really far you could get a scholarship in college so I think around middle school like between sixth and eighth grade that's when I started taking swimming pretty seriously okay nice Wait, I'm just curious what were your times in high school like before going into college um honestly they weren't that good um I think I was like <laughs> 158 in the 200 back um mm -hmm. 152 um in the 200 free maybe a 51 or 52 in the 100 free um in the 100 back i think i was a 55. Or that's 50. not bad <laughs> yeah, not terrible but my class going into michigan like i had a huge recruiting class so i felt like mm. i was kind of one of the underdogs going into college at michigan but, oh man <laughs> yeah so did your older sister kind of like it seems like y'all kind of followed the same footsteps of going to michigan and swimming through there is that just because it was close by or is it because your older sister went there or how did that all work you know it's funny you say that i always told my parents i said don't assume i'm going to michigan just because <laughs> um but it was nice that it was close to home it was only an hour away so it felt like it was far enough um to be you know, away from my parents, but it was easy enough drive to go back home if anything um, mm -hmm. did happen. But I really loved the academics there. I loved the team culture. It was really nice to obviously have Allie there and kind of paved the way in that aspect. But um, 
I wouldn't say that Ali was an influence in my decision in going there, but everything else okay. kind of just made sense. <laughs> what about your sister? Do you feel like your younger sisters kind of followed you along there or, or I, did they have the same outlook? A little bit of both. Um, you know, I mean, the University of Michigan has great academics and is a great school overall. So I think it was kind of hard to pass that opportunity up. Um, and I know we always kind of said if swimming, if something happened to us, um, we got injured or we couldn't swim anymore, would we still want to be at Michigan? So I mm -hmm. think that was a, a huge um role in our decision as well yeah definitely that's a good way to approach it for sure yeah do you feel uh wait so did you swim with well, were all four of you guys like in the same michigan like were you guys all there at once or so yes and apart? no the only way that we were there at once was um ali was a pro there were only three of us on the team at a time but okay. we were all able to actually swim together, just not compete together. So it's only three or four okay. of us at a Thanks. time. Thanks. You guys almost could have had like a Duluth <laughs> relay. <Yeah. laughs> That's funny. So yeah. did you guys push each other a lot in practice or like, was it really competitive between all you guys? I wouldn't say it was super competitive. Um, I mean, there were always times like we, I wanted to beat Katie or Allie wanted to beat me or Katie wanted to beat Allie. You know, there was always that like urge of like, I'm going to win, I'm going to fight. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we were always happy for each other. Um, but it did make practice a lot more fun and entertaining because we knew when, um, not to say that someone was giving up, but when someone was like falling off the train or falling off the wagon would be like, Hey, come on, you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. or it was fun to like joke with them, um, always have a friendly face and not take swimming so seriously. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but definitely competitive, but not to the extreme of like, Oh, Hey, I'm not going to talk to you if you won or if you beat right. me. You know? So was there ever any trash talk at all? Like, like, oh, you just got smoked or something like that yeah. or things like always, that. <laughs> always, yeah. And I think that's what made it so fun was that it was so light and we knew that it was always a joke, you know, mm -hmm. so nothing was ever taken too seriously. So I think that's what made swimming with my sisters way more fun mm -hmm. and the trash talk was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. I mean, that reminds me a lot of uh... – so you, you know Carrie, obviously, because I got introduced to you through Carrie, and she was telling me it sounds like almost a similar environment that she had. Uh, obviously, like she wasn't training with sisters or anything, but when she was training with Dave, Salo, uh, and um, I forget who the other two. I think was it Sony. What is her first name? Oh, Rebecca Sony. Yeah, Rebecca Sony. I think there was one other breaststroker. I can't remember who else she was training with, but they were all like neck and neck, like all the pretty much the same times and stuff like that. And it was just like constant like competition. They were obviously quite as close as you guys since you were sisters, but right. it reminded me of it. It's a similar environment where you have people that swim similar events. And obviously um, there's a lot of competition when you're on the same times and have right. like a, a good relationship too with each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. did, did you ever, did you ever feel uh, pressured after Katie made the Olympics that, that you needed to do the same? No, never. I mean, it's always been a goal of mine since I was a little girl to make um, the Olympic team. And when I didn't, it kind of stung, but I was so happy for Katie because it was such mm -hmm. a family. Like we all got her there, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. just her by herself. You know, you hear, mm -hmm. you hear the saying, it takes a village to do everything. So yeah, I kind of felt like, you know, I was a part of it in a way, but no, I never felt like you know, the reason, obviously the reason I'm still swimming now is to fulfill that dream or that goal. Cause I know I still have so much left to give, but mm -hmm. I never, like, I never feel pressure on a day-to-day -day ba basis to be like, oh, you know, just because Katie made the team means that I have to make the team as well. So. Mm -hmm. So do you and Katie train at the same place currently? No, um, I'm at the University of Tennessee and Katie's in the universe or at the University of Loughborough in London, England. So oh, she's wow, okay. UK. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who's her coach then? Um, that I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. She is getting um, she's going to school and getting her master's there. But I think oh, nice. she's out there with her boyfriend, Felix, who also swam mm -hmm. in Michigan. So um, yeah, I wish I knew our coach, but I don't. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. 
Yeah, I was just curious about like the relationship that you and Katie had because I know, for example, I have a younger brother and he also, he's not like as big into swimming as I am. He's just kind of doing it in high school, but just in things in general, I'm super competitive and I always want to, like, I don't want to let him beat me in anything just because when I'm the older brother and right. I don't know, I, I just, probably my ego, I have a big ego with stuff like that. So I'm just like, I don't want to let him win in anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely, there's definitely still that aspect, but you know, um, she's definitely more of a sprinter. She's mm -hmm. got that pure 50, 100 speed and I'm more of the 100, 200 girl. So okay. you know, we, it's nice to have our little specialties, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's like, I think we're all still pretty competitive and we want to beat each other. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. What, what do you feel like brings out the best in you when you swim? Honestly when I'm just having a good time and you know, I'm, everything's light. I don't take myself too seriously. Um, and when I'm having fun, enjoying the moment, like just being my authentic self, I think mm -hmm. that's when the best swimmer, um, of Gabby Duluth comes out. So to say, like, there's mm -hmm. no worries. I'm not worried about what time I have to go or who I have to beat or, you know, um, what I have to do. I don't feel like I have to prove myself to anyone. So it's kind of just mm -hmm. like being the best version of myself and all areas of my life. That's the that's best awesome. where I can be. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cause I know, uh, the worst thing you can do, especially like behind the block is to try to look at what other people are doing or try to pretend to be somebody else. You know, like I love that you said just being like your most authentic yeah. self is when you do the best yeah yeah it's taken me i feel like i did i was really good at that um in college in my first year post-grad and then i think you know when you start moving away from the college atmosphere and you're not doing it like you're doing it for yourself um you know when you're on a college team you're doing it for the team and you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself so i kind of at sometimes i lost sight of that but mm -hmm. um you know life happens and everything happens and you know things just happen that you kind of take a step back and you're like oh well you know I still am Gabby Duluth and people know me not as a swimmer you know so mm -hmm. I don't have to be identified or defined as just Gabby Duluth the swimmer so right that that's actually was a difficult thing for me at one point is because I I took a break from swimming like right now I'm just like getting back into it and mm -hmm. from so I didn't swim for like 10 months because I was like, I don't know if I want to continue. Like, I love swimming, but I don't know. Like, I want to figure out my life. And I just had all these thoughts. I was just trying to figure myself out, like, what I wanted to do. And I remember during that time, I'm like, man, it, it just, uh, it's kind of hard to find yourself after, like, you leave a sport that you've been doing for so long. It is. It is. And I took a six-month-long break this past summer. I competed in April in Greensboro. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't have the meet that I wanted to have, which is, <clears> you know, fine and it comes with um the territory of swimming but mm -hmm. I just I needed to take a step back and figure out like what I really wanted to do and um you know being away from the water makes you I mean it's either good or bad yeah. um but not even bad in a bad way it just kind of be like okay well you know I'm done or I'm ready like I'm recharged and ready to go or you're ready mm -hmm. to fulfill step in your career so I don't want to say it's a bad thing but kind of right. just makes you think in a bigger picture of what what you really want to do definitely I got some really good advice I don't know if you know do you know Melanie Thomas who she is she's good friends with Carrie yes yeah okay so she gave me some really good advice before like when I was because mm -hmm. I had just finished my college uh, swimming career and I reached out to her saying like, I don't know if I want to continue or not. Like, I don't really know what to do right now. And she was just like, don't worry. Um, like whatever you do, like swimming will always be here for you. Like you can always come back to swimming, but just try everything, see what you want to do. And if you feel called, like you can always come back to swimming. And that, I don't know, it just made me feel so much better. And yeah. I took her advice and I feel like it's calling me again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I never thought of it like that, of like swimming is always going to be there, but I mean, it's so true. You know, mm -hmm. you can take a step back. The pool is all, you're always going to find the pool in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess like how, 
because you said that you you tried to qualify for the last Olympics and you just missed it. And I guess, how did you deal with that? Like mentally and emotionally and things like that? Um, you know, I think I didn't really process it until I came back from trials because the 200 was one of my first events. So it was prelim semis and then finals the next day. And then the next morning I had to turn around and swim the hundred free. Mm. So I like, I was bummed, obviously I cried, I was upset, but I had my family there and my coach and my friends. So it was, you know, it, it lightened the load of not making the team, but I knew that I had to turn around and come back and, you know, I don't want to say put a brave face on, but I kind of just had to like, let it go um, mm -hmm. and deal with my emotions later. Cause I had another important race coming up and my sister was in that event in the hundred three yeah. and that's what ended up making the team in so it's kind of just like I gotta let my emotions out but not in front of her because that's her main event um right. but I think it definitely it was a huge learning experience for sure um but you know I, I processed it way more when I got home and it just fueled my fire a little more because I mean swimming so black and white you touch the wall and it's a tenth of a second you know yeah. or a hundred so I think it also just changed my outlook on life of knowing that like swimming isn't everything. And I know that I've accomplished so much in this sport, like more than I could have even ever asked myself mm -hmm. of going into college. So I have to remind myself of that too, is that I've come a really, really long way. Um, and I've accomplished a lot of great things that many people don't have the opportunity to do. So mm -hmm. kind of just you know, reflecting back on yeah. my time and everything mm -hmm. that's offered for me. So, right. So what about like, as far as managing your emotions, that's obviously like important. Um, and it really anything in life. And I mean, just relating it to swimming, like if you have a bad race, how do you keep yourself from thinking about like, or taking that into the next event or into like your next meet or whatever it is? Right. Um, you know, I learned this, I I guess I should call it advice, kind of like what you got from Melanie, but mm -hmm. Katie's boyfriend, Felix, I don't know if you know him or have mm -hmm. heard of him, but his junior year at NCAAs at Texas, he was the first seed um, for the 500. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that first day. And he swam so poorly. He swam, he got dead last. Um <sighs> And yeah so you know that hurt and then the next day he went into the 200 and I, he either scratched it or he, he didn't swim as well um and then the last day was the mile and he ended up winning the mile oh, wow. um and he was like you know you every day is a new day you know you can you can take what you want and learn from the mistakes and failures um in a good way and kind of just like almost like you know just push him to the side and be like I have a new race you know you never know what can happen just because he got last in the 500 didn't mean that he wasn't gonna win the mile you know mm -hmm. so I think it's definitely a mindset um and it takes a lot of practice but you know just every day is a new opportunity to give the best that you have in that moment and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so mm -hmm. yeah that's really good advice I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. What are, What are some of the biggest lessons that you feel like swimming's taught you? Oh, I feel like there's so many. <laughs> um, you know, the first is to not take yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a a huge one that I learn every single day, and I tell, I try to tell people, and I told people at Michigan too. You know, like. If you're having a bad day just focus on one thing like what can you get better at could it be streamlining off the wall you know taking an extra underwater dolphin kick um just like taking it step by step instead of being like oh i had this horrible practice i had a horrible day nothing went well you know like mm -hmm. taking the little like take three good things that went well um and stick mm -hmm. with those um and then going back to like the serious note like 
if you take yourself so seriously, nothing's going to be fun. Like I try to remind myself, why did I get into the sport of swimming? Because I was doing it with my sisters. I was making friends. I loved summer league. Everything was just so fun. So it's like constantly reminding myself why, who do I do it for? Why do I do it? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and then also I think swimming, as you know, teaches you a lot of time management skills. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so that's a huge one um, and managing your time well instead of being lazy um, and not getting stuff done. But I also think this might lead into another question, um, but I, and I think this is what made me so successful in college too, is that I am definitely process oriented instead of outcome oriented. And I think that's the mm. biggest one for me is that I love the grind. I love Mm -hmm. the process. I really love working hard and getting out of a practice. Even if I stuck to being like, yeah, well, I gave 100% that day. It was 100% to my ability. It might not have been great, um, but I have a new day tomorrow. But just like the process of, you know, working really hard towards something, lifting really hard and like just the whole process no matter what the outcome is i just i really love i'm always looking for the next thing and the next barrier to break you know and like push push my body to its limits or past its limits is what i really enjoy so i think that's the biggest Mm -hmm. lesson that i am still learning you know (laughs) that's awesome yeah so i'm really glad you said that about the uh like how you enjoy the practices and the grind and more almost as much if not more than like the racing itself because yeah. I, i'm the exact same way with that stuff and i feel like i never hear people say that because like whenever i talk to some of my old teammates and stuff um and i mean they all knew like i loved practice like after swimming i could not wait to get back in the pool the next day and like fix the things i i messed up on and stuff like that and and all of them are like, ah, oh, practice, like, oh, okay, here we go. And for me, I'm like up at 5 a.m., like fired up, like, let's go, and like jumping in the water right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's cool that you had the same outlook. Yeah, and it's not to say that I don't love racing because I do love getting up on the block, but it's just, mm-hmm. it's something else about, you know, the process and knowing when you get up on that block during taper for conference or NCAAs or at Olympic trials, knowing that like you gave everything that you had um, Mm -hmm. and there was nothing left to give, you know? Yeah. That's important for sure. Especially like, cause I know for myself, I was training to be a national champion for my division and, and even to break some, like I had the school record that I was really close to breaking and I just missed it. Like barely like by, I, uh, I think it was like by point three, but it, I messed up a turn and, and pretty bad. And I missed it by point three. I know I could have broken it if I would have hit my turn right, but I got barely yeah. pushed off the wall when I flipped and I was so mad at myself. But at the end of the day, I had to realize like I did everything I could in training. Like I right. literally did everything. I couldn't think of anything else I could have done better. And so as long as you knowing that you gave it your all, um, it's, it's a little bit easier to, to sit with it. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. There's no like, what if, so what if I did that? Or what if I did this? You know, mm-hmm. it's everything was left in the pool at that point, you know, yep. exactly. Cool. But so, yeah, you kind of led into the next question about, um, like, so you said, uh, being, a you said pro- being out, no process oriented versus outcome oriented was one of the things that have helped you, um, get to where you are like today, as far as like how fast you are. And I know, obviously it's not just like one thing or like three things. It's literally everything that helps you to be, to get to where you are, like the good times, the bad times, like everything that helps you. And so I, I guess what is maybe like one or two other things that you feel like has helped you, um, to get to where you are in swimming? Um, you know, I think also not being afraid to try new things. Um, there was this one specific moment in my collegiate years at Michigan where um, I was having, I still have difficulty with my freestyle stroke where I don't pull as much water, like I'm not catching, but mm-hmm. they noticed that if I was breathing every three bilaterally that I caught more water um with an open arm so i was practicing that for a little bit and then i even ended up going to swim meet and trying that new stroke out 
and I swam so bad. I think I gained like four seconds in the 200 free oh, at that meet and I got out of the pool. And I Luckily, I made it back, so I had another opportunity to swim, but I was like, you know, I tried it out. Um, I wasn't afraid to do it. I don't think it works, so I'm going to go back and swim. <laughs> my and I did, and I went like the time that I was seated with, so I was like, knowing that too that's another lesson that i think um not being afraid to try something even though if you know it's not gonna work um and it's not to say like you have to prove it to someone but being a being open-minded um i think really helps you too because if you're close-minded and you don't really you already have this preconceived notion of oh well i know it's not gonna work or whatever like you can still like i still learned how to catch more water you know, like there's little outcomes um, that can benefit you in all areas of your swimming that you can, like take little things. But mm -hmm. I also think, you know, just being open minded and not being closed off and willing to fail. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge thing, willing to take a risk to see um, if it'll benefit you or not. Because if you have this fear, fear of failure, like you might as well have already failed with that. Yeah. So, uh, Another huge thing, too. Yeah, that's re that's really good. I like that because it actually reminds me of a well. There, you reminded me of two quotes in that. The first yeah. one was the, I think it was by Thomas Edison when he was like creating the light bulb. I think it was him. I might have got the name mixed up, but mm -hmm. whoever the guy was that created the light bulb, he's like, I didn't uh, fail like ten thousand times or something. I I fail or I learned ten thousand ways like how not to, or maybe it's for electricity or something, how yeah. not to make electricity or how, not, how the light bulb doesn't work, something along those lines. Do yeah. you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yes, I do, yeah, yeah. I totally butchered no. it like so bad, but it was something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you were getting at, yeah. No, but it's true. I mean, like, you don't fail once, you know, you learn, you learn from your failures and mistakes. And I think there are lessons on opportunities that lie within everything. Um, so mm -hmm. you just have to be willing to, to mm -hmm. do it, you know? Yeah. I, ha I had this thought, this was a couple months ago where it was like, if I don't get, like I said, I'm 60 years old or 50 or 70, however old, somewhere like way down the line and I'm not where I want to be in my life. I had this weird thought where it's like, maybe I didn't fail enough times, but I think it's true though. Like I, I don't want to be at the end of my life and be like, dang, I wish I, I could have accomplished this or at least given it my all because if yeah. i have those like regrets and that means i just didn't put myself out there in positions where i could fail but if you don't put yeah. yourself in those positions you're never going to know what you're capable of exactly. yeah i agree with that 100 percent, and i think that even goes back to you know everyone i'm turning 27 in two months and everyone is kind of like oh like you're kind of getting old you know why are you still swimming and it's like, I know I have the rest of my life to work or find out, yeah. like, I already know things that I want to do and I'm done swimming, but I don't want to live with any regret, like, mm -hmm. of trying again for 2024, you know, I still have so much time left to live. And like you said, I don't want to be 70 and be like, oh, well, maybe I should have swam for that extra three years, you mm -hmm. know, after COVID and after 2021, you know, but yeah, yeah so I think living with no regrets is, is huge. Definitely. Do you use visualization often when you train? <clears throat> um, you know, I have a hard time, honestly, with visualization. Um, I like being mindful and practicing here in Tennessee about like three or four times a week. We'll go and meditate um, and be mindful for about 10 to 15 minutes before practice to just to like get yourself ready to go um, and prepare to swim. And I, I like that, um, you know, like centering my breath, focusing mm -hmm. on my body and feeling, feeling one with myself before I get in. But we used to visualize at Michigan and I never for the life of me is like, I either always fell asleep <laughs> or I just couldn't, like I just couldn't figure out how to like visualize myself swimming mm. um you know some people do it really well but I just I have tried visual, visual visualization but it's been really hard for me to focus on like finding myself swimming if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense I, I like the meditation like 
like calming my brain, focusing on my breath um, and being mindful. I know it's kind of like one and the same, I guess, with visualization mm -hmm. just a little bit. But. Yeah, I mean, visualization, I, I think it's like a form of meditation. There's just like yeah. a little bit, there's like some differences, I guess, but I also consider it like a form of meditation. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. so do you yeah. do any like breathing exercises or even like before behind the block or before your races, do you do stuff like that as well? Um, I guess I do, but I don't really, I'm not like, oh, I need to go, um, you know, find a quiet space. I think I can, I'm pretty good at like, just, I like being with everyone, but I know when it's time to kind of like focus in on myself, I, I'll kind of walk away, but I still like being a part of something i think it lightens the mood um and it gets me ready but I, I will definitely focus on my breathing you know like the triangle breathing of inhale hold for 10 or inhale for 10 seconds hold for 10 and then let go for 10 mm -hmm. um and you can even do that like five or six breaths you know sometimes i do it shorter mm -hmm. if i'm running out of time so to say mm -hmm. but i wouldn't say i have like a set routine of like mm -hmm. i need to go and do that but I wait, wait so what is the what is the triangle breathing dude is it just is it just like how you get into the zone kind of or yeah yeah it kind of just quiets my mind um if i it brings me back to like my body um you know so in case i get nervous it's just kind of calming the nervous mm -hmm. system down um and you're, you're focusing on your breathing instead of focusing on like the outcome of the race oh, yeah. or mm -hmm. that kind of thing so yeah, just like focusing on breathing um, mm -hmm. helps me to remind myself that I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, I guess what that kind of makes me think of another question that I struggled with, which was thinking behind the block. Like, do you ever have that where, or maybe you're pretty good now at shutting it off, but I've had in the past, I'd be behind the block and that's actually why I messed my turn up is because I kept thinking like, okay, as long as I hit this turn, I know I'm going to break my school record. And I just kept thinking about that. And I'd practice that turn. Like that was my focus from conference till nationals was just that turn. Every turn was me thinking about that turn. So I knew as long as I hit that right, I was going to break it. And of course that was the one thing I messed up. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I didn't even look at my time when I got out of the pool. Cause I, I just knew I didn't break it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've never been much of an overthinker. Um, if you had the opportunity probably to ask my college coaches, um, they probably knew that I never thought about anything while I was swimming, um, <laughs> you know, which is good and bad. Um, but no, I think behind the blocks, I kind of just, you know, my body knows what to do. I get up and I go and race and I touch the wall and it is what it is, but I try, I try not to overthink because I know when I overthink, um, not to say that things go wrong, but like they don't go the way mm -hmm. that you want them to. Because I know if you're thinking, then you can't be in the zone because the zone is yeah. no thoughts and you're just in flow state. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. No, definitely no thinking going on behind the box. <laughs> <laughs> like the last one I'm like oh if my sister's next to me I'm talking to my sister before I'm racing or I'm trying to make a joke or like it's also funny too um I tend to warm up really really late like I like to just like mm. warm up kind of like mosey my way over to yeah. the block so a lot of people are, get stressed out by me but I'm like I have enough time you know I got my time <laughs> swimming um but i definitely push things off to like the last minute so like 10 minutes before my race i could be coming out from the locker room oh geez <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i'm like the complete opposite like i'm i try to be like one of the first ones in the warm-up pool to like have the clear fresh water i don't have to worry about running into people like circle swimming when the lanes are packed and things like that <laughs> yeah nope i'm definitely save everything for the last minute <laughs> that's funny <laughs> So uh, I want to switch topics a little bit. So I know you're working with Erica Biney. That's how you pronounce her last name, right? Okay. How, how has working with her helped you in swimming? Um, you know, she does this 12 week DNA program where you can, you get your cheek swabbed based on your DNA and your genetics. And it comes back a few weeks later with a whole 46 page report. 
um, and it shows your recovery rate, what kind of um, athlete you are, if your speed or endurance, um, your sensitivities to carbohydrates, fats, um, caffeine, um, all this kind of stuff, your inflammation, if you're at risk for injuries and all this stuff. So I actually did this test in 2019 um, when she was kind of first coming out with it. And I've learned a lot and I'm still learning every single day, like what new foods to, to incorporate into my diet, you know, to prevent the inflammation in my body because I mm. do have a slower recovery rate and my inflammation <clears throat> I tend to carry like hold on to my inflammation from swimming and training mm. more than others. So, you know, like making sure I'm get, eating enough salmon or like enough fruits and veggies um, and really trying to find those foods that will help my body train me to be the best that I can be in the pool. So it's mm. kind of like a little bit of everything, you know, like I'm doing our social media, but I, I'm still learning about mm -hmm. myself, how I can incorporate new things to be a better swimmer so so does your body ever change over time with what it likes and what it doesn't like like do you have to ever retest to see if your body's adapted or anything nope um because it's all just based on your genetics um and you can have this information when you're done swimming so it even tells you like what um exercises help um you like if you were looking to lose weight not that you have to lose weight mm -hmm. but like i do well with um high intensity and like strength training. So mm. it tells you like what to pair together um, just for your body to perform the best or feel its best. But no, there's no retesting done. I think with this, you kind of like, I mean, I feel a difference when I incorporate new foods. You know, when mm. I just came back from Christmas and they ate a ton of sugar, you know, mm -hmm. when I was feeling pretty crummy and fatigued and that's probably why I got sick who knows <laughs> but, um, when I start incorporating healthier things and cutting out the sugar I'm like I'm awake I don't have to take naps during the day um I'm ready to go to work out I don't feel as tired like I'm sleeping better um and I even have this fancy thing called a whoop I don't know if you know <laughs> yeah I've seen those yeah, those help with my recovery too. It helps me um, see how much sleep I'm getting and how hard I'm exerting myself in training. And then I get to focus more in on my recovery and what kinds of foods will help me with that. So mm. I know that was a lot. <laughs> no, no that, was, that was great. I, I've actually thought about getting a Whoop. But I didn't know, like I have an Apple Watch, but I don't think it's even close from what I've seen to what a Whoop does. Yeah, no, I also have an Apple Watch, um, and I like the Apple Watch because it has the time on it, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love the Whoop because it kind of holds you accountable. Um, it gives you a, a recovery score every single day based on mm. your sleep and your physical exertion um, from the day before and your heart rate uh, variability and everything. I think it's a That's great nice. investment. If I were you, I would get a Whoop. Um, yeah. <laughs> really nice i really i really enjoy having the move yeah do, do you think though like with uh because you said in the testing it tells you like what kind of exercises you pair together and things like that do, does that also apply to swim training as well like if you like let's say for example like what would you say you did well with uh was it a high intensity like low rest or something yeah high intensity um training and then paired with strength and power so lifting okay but Actually, it's funny. I am on the type of athlete I am is I'm like all the way endurance. So you would think when you think endurance that I should be swimming the mile, right? Mm. But I swim the 100 and the 200. But that just means that when I have the opportunity to swim 100 or 50 or come taper, I just have to focus and hone in more on those fast twitch muscle fibers. Mm. Um, so you just have to train. Um, those fast twitch, you have to do it more so. Like my other two sisters are pure sprinters, showed up on their DNA results, and that's what they mm. that's what they swim. But I'm like complete opposite, um, and I don't really swim those events. I don't mm -hmm. swim the mile ever, <laughs> and I never. <laughs> <laughs> but it does like it pairs well because I'm one, and my sisters tell me all the time too. They're like, I could go forever in a workout and not die. 
Mm -hmm. you know i mean i have those times where like i fall off the bus like everyone else does but it's the endurance you know and the aerobic um capacity that i have um Mm. that helps me to keep going so Mm. that's really cool I'm, i'm i'm curious to see what mine would be if i take like one of those tests or something yeah you should do it it's really interesting um mm-hmm. can help post-grad so <laughs> yeah definitely so uh after this last question i have like some speed questions i ask at the end of every podcast i didn't tell you them in advance because i always like them to be off the top of the head <laughs> but uh before we get into that do you have anything else like you want to say or, like any tips or advice or anything like that you want to leave people with i think the only thing and something that i am learning and still going through and we kind of talked about it too but like do what you love for as long as you can um and don't be afraid of how old you are how young you are you know you can you can succeed at 30 and fail at 35 and succeed again at 40 um and i mean i'm not there yet i'm not that old but i think i've seen a lot of success from 18 through 22 and i've seen a lot of failure from 22 to 26 Um, and I'm really living my life with no regrets. I'm really happy and I love the sport, but making sure that you find what you love and what sparks the passion and making sure that you're doing it for the reasons that you want to, not because Mm -hmm. you're trying to do it for someone else. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. All right. You ready for these speed questions? Okay. (laughs) They may not be quite as speedy as you're thinking, but um just because when i you're gonna see what i mean in a second whenever i ask them they're like oh man there's so many so okay Okay. all right we're jumping into it so what is the best piece of advice you've got that's impacted you the most Uh, be afraid to fail Mm, that's a good one dang you're good that was quick (laughs) what's your favorite quote and why oh my favorite quote Uh, that's a hard one i feel like i have a (laughs) lot I definitely like the one, the world is your oyster. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like it just because you can make, it goes back to everything, but finding your passions, like make the world what you want it to be. Um, mm-hmm. It's open to everything. Yeah, definitely. And then what book do you recommend that everyone should read? Okay. I love reading. Um, and I feel like I have a few, but Atomic Habits. That's a good one. A really good um, and then I still have yet to read this book, but I want to read the book called Why We Sleep. So Wait, what is it called? Called Why We Sleep. Oh, Why We Sleep. Okay. Yeah. What, what is that one supposed to be about? Um, I think it's just supposed to help you. I mean, from what I've heard, um, just like the sleep cycles and the importance of setting circadian rhythms and waking up at consistent times. Um, dip in the morning and then going to bed at the same time so that the rhythms are set. Um, and there's like a brief, maybe it's not brief, but it tells you why it's important to not take naps. And mm. I used to take a lot of naps and <laughs> I haven't taken naps anymore, but I want to know the reason behind it. So that's why I want to read that. <laughs> um, and I love to sleep too, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but it also goes into like, you know, the different, the REM sleep, um, mm. your deep, the light sleep and all that stuff. So it's kind of more science based, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. And then do you have any like shout outs or call outs or anything like that? I don't think so. <laughs> um, so, um, everyone here at the university of Tennessee, thanks for letting me come, um, and be a part of the program. I'm so happy and I love it and I'm ready for this next chapter and then just Thank you to all my family and friends um, for loving and supporting me, even at the age of 27 <laughs> and still Amazing. doing what I, yeah. So just those. Awesome. Perfect. And then uh, if, where can people find you if they want to connect or follow along with your journey? Yes. Um, I do have a Twitter, but I'm not active on it. So Facebook and Instagram, um, my Instagram handle is at G Duluth, And then my Facebook is just Gabby Duluth. So, but you'll find me awesome. most active. Yeah. And I'll put those in the comments so that way people can click on it and find you a lot easier. And then, um, yeah, thanks for hopping on Gabby. I appreciate it. So fun. Thank you. Yeah.